Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're also going to stick to my home county of Skåne here in the very south of the country. For this one, we're having a look at another collaboration beer. Uh, the home brewery in this case is one that you've seen me review numerous beers from on the channel before and this one comes from their more kind of experimental and quirky series that they've been releasing over the last couple of months and the other brewery involved here is one of the numerous minus one, minus eight brewing collective brewers uh, who are based at the uh, the Bishop's Arms Gustav Alice toy in Malmö. So um, yeah, curious to see how this one turns out because it is a style of beer that I really quite enjoy actually. For this one then we are going to go to Fintria which is to the south of Malmö and we're having a look at yet another beer from Hulia Brewery. So this is number three in their Hulia Lab series. It's called the Hulia Cat Cascadian Dark Ale, a black IPA, Cascadian Dark, however you want to term it, coming in at 6.6% ABV, and it's brewed in collaboration with Lazy Kitty Brewing, as I said, one of the numerous brewers involved in the minus one, minus eight brewing collective at the Bishop's Arms in Gustav Alves Torrey in Malmö. So um, yeah, really curious to see how this one turns out. I've been wanting Hayley Bregory to produce a black IPA for quite some time. The, you know, my favourite beers that I've had from these guys, of course, have been the original Hayley Pan. Um, and the uh, the Skånsk Lager and the Fien Pilsner are also really, really nice beers, actually. I really, really enjoyed those. Um, Hayley Bregory really know what they're doing when it comes to, uh, to lager beers. Uh, the first beer that re they released in the Hayley Lab series was an Imperial Pills, if I remember rightly. Uh, then the last one was the Cartwright Double IPA, and this time we have this, and they've got another lager coming out actually in September. So you will see that one reviewed on the channel at some point in the fairly near future as well. But really, really curious to see how um, how they do with a black IPA. Nice to be able to introduce Lazy Kitty Brewing for you as well. I do like supporting the local breweries in Malmö as well. The Malmö beer scene has does seem to have expanded quite a bit uh, over the last couple of years. So it's really nice to see that more and more kind of little brewers are popping up of course. So my very first encounter with them and hopefully I can try a few more of their beers at some point in the uh, in the fairly near future. But um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done both from Hayley Bravery and my future reviews that I'll do as well from uh, from Lazy Kitty Brewing if I can find some of their beers. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Hayley Bravery once again then. So Hayley Bravery as I've told you before, started off as the home brewing experimentations of Michael Nathorst, who is from Vintria, a few minutes to the south of Hylia in the southern part of Malmö. So for a number of years, he was a home brewer and he just built up his own brew in his garage where he was experimenting with lots of different styles of beers with his friends. He started brewing there in around 2013 and just, you know, gradually learned more and more about the trade. But he worked for a number of years in the plumbing industry and for a period of time, he was working four days as a plumber and one day with the brewery. But he's also also good friends with Torsten Ekne who is the original owner of the Beer Ditch Bar in Malmö and when Beer Ditch began Michael decided that he wanted to turn his garage brewery into a proper brewery so he registered Hayley Bravery as an official company in 2015. But these days Michael is joined at the brewery by Eric Fritihoff who is a partner in the company now and he deals with the sales and marketing side of it. He's also one of the founders of the Great Swedish Beer Festival apparently and uh, over the last few years since Eric joined they've really kind of started to grow and get their beers out there a little bit more which is great. In 2019 the brewery joined forces with Cycle Pipes and Limham's Brewery to form a new company that owns a brewery building and it was there that the three companies were brewing their beer for a period of time. They had a 1000 litre brew kit but this arrangement unfortunately only lasted for a few months before uh, uh, Hayley Bregory moved off to a farm near Fintria because you know it just didn't work out. I'm not sure exactly what the story 
behind that is but uh, yeah now uh, Hayley Bregory are brewing on a farm outside of Fintria and they have they do seem to be expanding their capacity more and more actually which is great and you know it's nice to see the Hayley Bregory beers getting out there a little bit more um, as of September 2020 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced around 60 different types of beer and I think we are going to see uh, you know a new beer a month at least from these guys over the next little while because they do have the Hayley Lab series that they're doing and uh, I'm not sure when they will release other ones for the, the core series as well but yeah my favorite beers that I've had from these guys in recent times would probably be the um would be the original uh, Hayley Pan IPA that they did their West Coast IPA it's a really properly old school IPA that one and um uh, the uh, Skonsk Lager I think is a very very nice beer the Fiend Pilsner is very good but I think the Skonsk Lager for me with the more kind of biscuit sweetness is probably the one that uh, that really sticks in mind so I do hope that that beer returns as, uh, as a core beer I'm not sure I think it's not available at the moment but I think there are plans from what uh, from what I was told to to bring this one back don't quote me on that though but um, yeah a really really nice brewery this one Michael is one that I do want to feature on the channel in a meet the brewery segment at some point he did say if I remember rightly he did say that he would do it but we just need to kind of try and uh, sort out a time for that because obviously he is very very busy and things but yeah fingers crossed that that's something we can uh, we can fix in the fairly near future but um, yeah that's all I can really tell you about Hayley Bregory for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all of the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's go on to Lazy Kitty Brewing then and it's just a very short history we have of these guys. So um, yeah, Lazy Kitty Brewing as I've mentioned to you already is one of the numerous members of the Minus One Minus Et Brewing Collective that you'll find under the Bishop's Arms in Gustav Alves Torrey in Malmö. The brand itself is owned by Frederick Nordmark and he's one of the original founders of this Minus Et Minus One Brewing Collective and uh, they founded it back in 2014 but he worked in Taproom in Malmö and uh, he also homebrewed because uh, he was a poor student. That was basically where the Lazy Kitty Brewing thing kind of started. But these days he lives in Kyoto and he runs a bar and import company which is called Dig the Line. Hopefully the next time I'm out in Japan I can actually go and meet him for a beer and that would be pretty cool actually. Um, I'll maybe do a little out and about video at the bar or something like that. And um, yeah, as of September 20, uh, according to Untapped, these guys have produced 30 different beers. Um, Frederick, I actually messaged him on Facebook to try and get some information about the brewery because there was just nothing otherwise and uh, yeah he was telling me that um, he's not so active in Sweden anymore because he is mainly over there in uh, in Kyoto and apparently the reason that this beer was brewed was because uh, the company Dig the Line are importing some of the Haley beers into um, into Japan actually so that's pretty damn cool actually that Haley Brewery are making it out there to uh, out there to Japan I never would have thought that um, that would be one of the first places that they started to export to actually you know you would think it would be Denmark or Norway or you know maybe down into Germany or something like this but that's pretty damn cool actually that the Haley Brewery beers are heading over to Japan now so I think if I do find one over there I will need to actually uh, have a taste of that and see how it and see how it is over there that's pretty cool actually that some of the Malmö the beers are getting over there but um, yeah that's all I can really tell you about Lazy Kitty Brewing for the moment big thank you to Frederick for um, chatting to me over messenger and giving me that information and yeah hopefully I can either catch him over in Japan at some point or um, or I can catch him one of the next times he's over here in Sweden. He said that um, when I sent him my, one of the videos to show him you know, what the point of me messaging him was, he said that he thinks he's spoken to me in, uh, in taproom and things like that as well. So uh, yeah, probably I would recognise him if I, uh, if I saw him actually, because I do go to taproom, you know, at least once or twice a month actually but um, yeah pretty cool to be able to feature these guys for you here on the channel and hopefully we can do a, a little out and about video at Dig The Line as I said so I'll put the Dig The Line Facebook page and the Lazy Kitty Brewing Facebook page in the uh, description for you below so you can check those guys out you can look at Untapped and see all the different beers that they've done but yeah there's not a website for this uh, for this brewery unfortunately but um, yeah that's all I can tell you about them so let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself and see how we get on so yeah, just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open up. If I remember rightly, the symbol that's on the front of this one is actually the same as was on the Cartwright double IPA. So um, yeah, maybe this is something, the hop flower and the deer, maybe this is just something that um, 
who the Bravery are going to um, are going to go for now. But yeah, you can see there there is the Hulia Bravery symbol with the famous water tower there that you'll find next to the Emporia shopping mall. And there you can see there is the Lazy Kitty Brewing. So um, yeah, six point six percent black IPA this one. And uh, yeah, it says on the back here, uh, Hooli Labs number three, the Hooli Cat Cascadian Dark Ale brewed as a collaboration with Lazy Cat Brewing. So Hooli Cat is not a standard beer, a delicate Cascadian Dark Ale or Black IPA combining heavily roasted barley with a, and distinct bitterness with floral hops. This beer is brewed together with our guy in Japan, Lazy Kitty Brewing. Hooli Labs is our experimental division where your, our love of craft beer is brought to you in small batches. Beers crafted at Hooli contain only the finest hops and barley, sometimes accompanied with locally grown ingredients from our 17th century farm in the outskirts of Malmö. Hooli, we want to share our devotion to independence, craftsmanship and quality and the community we live and work for. So uh, yeah, pretty cool actually. But yeah, the beers that were I saw listed as the top ones from uh, Lazy Kitty Brewing, there was a billion of ice that was rated really highly, their double IPA was rated really nicely and I think number four was a beer, I think, I want to say it was called First, if I remember rightly, and it was a black IPA coming in at 6.6% ABV. It was brewed for the release of um, of a band's album actually that was still got the tab open. Uh, the beer itself was called uh, Murka, sorry, Murka. I guess that means like darkness or something. Murk is uh, of course dark in Sweden. But uh, yeah, 6.6% black IPA, this one, 440 milliliter can. Let's get it out and into the glass and see how we get on. So um, yeah, quite excited for this one as I said, because I've been wanting Hooli Bregory to have a go at a black IPA for quite some time. I'd love, you know, the likes of OO Brewing and Stieg Berriots and, uh, you know, these other breweries to have a go at it. The black IPAs were all the rage back in, like, you know, 2014, 2015, probably a bit before that, actually. I'm losing track of time. But yeah, I really like this style of beer. It's just a shame that you don't see all that many of them brewed anymore, actually. The Cascadian Darks and Black IPAs, if they're done right, they can be very, very nice, actually. So, um, yeah, as you can see with this beer, and as you would expect, this one's poured a lovely dark sort of ebony rosewood colour. You can see there's about a third of a finger of a frothy, I would say kind of fawn, light beige coloured head on this one. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. There's a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head. The head has just faded away to be a very, very kind of thin foamy layer on this one. If you shine the light through it, it does have a little bit of a kind of mahogany, chestnutty coloured edge. But um, yeah, it looks pretty nice actually. I like how this one... Um, I like how this one uh, goes together. It looks pretty much as you would expect from a black IPA. So um, yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this one. Nothing particularly surprising about the appearance of this beer, but I have to say, just from looking at it, I think this is going to be a pretty nice one, to be honest with you. It looks great. Yeah, that smells pretty nice. Um, I think this one is kind of pretty old school in terms of the black IPAs. I mean, there's some really interesting, you can use lots of different hops in these black IPAs. You know, you can use the likes of Willamette, Simcoe can give you some really char interesting characteristics when you put it into a black IPA. Uh, the Eureka hop, from what I gather, is very popular amongst breweries in the States when it comes to uh, to black IPAs, because it gives you those kind of black currenty, blackberry-ish notes. And you can use things like Northern Brewer from Germany, uh, Bramless Cross from England if you really wanted to. These have all got lovely red fruity characters to them. But, yeah, this one, it does strike me as quite an old school beer, this, I have to say. I wouldn't be surprised if it is... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it is simply Cascade that's in this one and it's a properly old school uh, kind of black IPA. Cascade's a beautiful hop, actually. Um... A lot of people seem to forget about it these days. It's all about the Citras, you know, the Idaho Sevens, the the um, the Galaxies, and all of that these days. It's a bit of a shame that some of the older hops get forgotten about a little bit. But this is a lovely, lovely smelling beer actually. Um, this one, I would say, straight away with this beer, you can smell some of that roasty, toasty black malt in there. It does have a little bit of a slightly bready, kind of brown bready quality to it, but that comes across as quite soft. You do still get that kind of roasty, toasty edge that you would expect of a black IPA. It's almost a bit like a kind of well-fired bread crust, in honesty. It is a little bit like that, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, there's a bit of brown sugar to this one. There is a bit of sweet caramel, but a kind of toasty 
uh, a kind of toasty, uh, well-fired kind of element to that as well. A few little biscuity elements too, but um, yeah, in that sense, it comes across as a very kind of straight up beer, as I say, roasty black malts underneath, a bit of a well-fired bread crust, some kind of brown bready notes to it, a little bit of a kind of toasty caramelly note, and uh, a little bit of a kind of sweeter, oily caramel to it as well, actually, and some biscuity qualities. So yeah, I really like how um, I really like how that goes together. The malt base in this one is pretty old school, and it does get a little bit sweeter the more that you smell of it, actually, I would say. But yeah, it goes together um, very, very nicely, I'll have to say. So yeah, again, nothing surprising about it, but the aroma is very, very nice, actually. There's nothing um, strange about this beer in terms of its aroma or unusual or whatever. Um, yeah, it comes across really nicely. On the hoppy side of things, you've got a good little bit of earthiness coming out of this one. Um, you've got some nice big floral notes to it. It does have a little bit of that slight dankness to it, and that is what makes me think there might only be Cascade in this one. Um, there might be a bit of Chinook, of course. Chinook or even Columbus can be used as a bit of a bittering hop. Cascade are probably, it can probably be used more as a kind of flavouring hop in these kind of beers. Um, but yeah, uh, on the gra it, it does have a bit of a grassiness to it as well, but on the fruity side of things, it comes across really nicely. There's a lovely kind of juicy... Um, there's a lovely sort of juicy, uh, how would you say, it's, it's, quite, it's got a bit of a kind of dark raisiny kind of element to it. It's also got a little bit of that more kind of plummy juiciness in fairness. I'd say it's more of a kind of juicy plum kind of quality you get out of this one. There's a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a figgy element to it, but it's also got some kind of um, black currenty blackberry type notes on the front of the nose as well. I feel that I've been using those descriptors quite a bit recently because I've had quite a few very nice uh, dark beers actually. But for me, this one, it really leans towards... Um, it's got a bit more of that juicy berryish kind of note to it. The kind of figgy notes I'm talking about are quite minimal, and you've just got a wee bit of um, you do have a wee bit of a kind of um, you do have a wee bit of that kind of um, juicy plummy note at the back of the nose as well. But um, yeah, the aroma of this one is pretty nice actually. It doesn't do anything unexpected for the style. But it comes across as really pretty damn solid in what it's trying to do. So, um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one and see how we go. And do take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma. This is a style you don't come across too often. And for me, this is a really solid example and kind of old school example as well, I would say, in terms of uh, in terms of its aroma. So let's have a taste of this one then and see how we go. on. So this one is the Hooli Cat 6.6% Black IPA Cascadian Dark Ale, however you want to call it. Uh, part of the Hooli Lab series, number three brewed in collaboration with Lazy Kitty Brewing, who are, I guess you could say, now based in Kyoto in Japan. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja Skull. Yeah, that's that's really pretty, pretty nicely done once again. Yeah, um, I really like that actually. Um, one of the things I've, I, I said it quite a lot in my older reviews of black IPAs that I always felt this was a style that was a bit better as an imperial, and much of the the basis that I had for that was that one of the first black IPAs that I reviewed was the Toil Black Malts and Body Salts, and that was just a beautiful, beautiful beer. Um, you know, it's and I think probably one of the first ones I would have tried would have been the Libertine Black from a uh, brew dog back in the day. And um yeah, it's just a style that's always kinda stuck with me actually. I really um I really like this, uh, these black IPAs. And this one's it's a really solid, very old school example of this one. It's six point six percent. I think they've got the balance in this one right. One of the reasons I always liked the Imperials with this style was that it had a bit of sweetness. Just to balance out, you had quite a few breweries who were doing these, and the and the it might have just been again, you know, my palate kind of getting used to them at the time. But I always used to find the slightly lower alcohol ones were very harsh and dry in terms of the malty side of things. But um, yeah, I think you know as my palate's matured, it maybe on reflection, um, it maybe was, um just you know getting used to the style as you get you know I had the same with like sour beers and lambic beers and stuff like this.
but yeah this one's a really nice example of the style action. I find that this one it has a good bit of dryness to it in the beginning and some of that comes back but the dryness and bitterness that you get out of this beer is really well balanced with the kind of sweeter elements of it as well and I think this one is really just uh, it's just it's a really well crafted beer this one as I say it doesn't I think the black IP is a style that's really difficult to get right in terms of the balance between those sweeter elements and the kind of roasty elements like I said but um, these guys have done it really pretty nicely I have to say I think um, this one uh, really really works pretty damn well yeah I do like how this how this um, how all this fits together um, yeah let's try and describe this flavour for you a little bit then so straight away with this beer you will feel a little bit of that kind of roasty toasty black malt there just uh, that just blankets the the bottom layer of the tongue but then on top of that it gets a little bit more you do have a bit of that kind of nice bread crusty quality coming out of it um it does yeah it, it does i do wonder i don't know if there's a bit of carafa in this or something there's something that tells me it's not quite bready enough it's not got enough of that kind of brown bready quality to make it like that because yeah the black malts are there you do get a bit more of a kind of thicker bread crusty note on top of it and there is an element, a very kind of thin layer of a sort of almost kind of rye breadish type quality to it. There is a kind of layer of that. So it's almost like you've got three very thin layers that are forming the backbone of the beer here. But that can and that kind of whole thing, that lingers throughout the whole um the whole kind of taste experience, if you like, of this beer. It's really I, I like that about this one. It's got a consistent backbone, I have to say. So um yeah. Yeah, it's pretty damn solid actually. That's nice, it really is. Um, yeah, so you'll notice that if you go towards the back third of your palate, you'll feel the beer, it does have a little bit more of a kind of harshness to the kind of roasty toasty side of things, a few more of the grainy elements and the black malty notes come out on the back third of the palate. Um, and that's yeah, that's where you get a good chunk of the bitterness out of the beer. But yeah, as you come a little bit more further forward into the middle third of your tongue, this is where you start to get the kind of sweeter elements. So you kind of get almost like a kind of um, circle, if you like, of uh, or an island, if you like, of this kind of uh, sweet kind of brown sugary note there. On the bottom layer of this, it's a bit kind of more McVitie's digestive biscuit like. It really has a bit of that kind of um, biscuit quality to it, but as you move gradually more towards the centre of it, it gets a little bit thicker and a little bit more kind of sweet and caramelly in terms of the, the brown sugary notes. So yeah, this beer, it's, it almost in the middle of your palate, it almost feels like it has the five layers, the roasty black malts, a bit of the kind of more toasty bread crust, the brown bread, then the biscuity notes, and then you've got a bit of that kind of sweeter caramel there. Because of the black malts and the roasty kind of backbone that the beer has, it does feel as if the brown sugars are a little bit kind of, um, are a little bit more sort of um, toasty compared to other ones actually, so... I like that about this beer. It does, as I say, the sweetness for me, the sweetness, and the uh, the kind of roasty elements of the beer, are really, um, really very well balanced actually, and that's that's what makes this beer kind of stand out a bit. I do hope that this is one that um, maybe they'll take the recipe for it and release it as part of the core range or something like that. They, maybe they could call it the the blackie pan or something. I don't know, but that's probably. Yeah, probably in today's kind of climate, that's probably <laughs> that's probably not a, a, the best name. Uh, the, or could they call it the Huli, uh, the Huli Bipan or something like that, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is why I don't make up beer names, guys, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is really, really quite nice. Um, so yeah, solid, solid beer in terms of the malt base. You have to have a good malt base for the black IPA to work, and they've certainly got that here. On the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you do have a little bit of earthiness out of this one. As you move further forward along the sides of the palate, that earthiness does kind of push its way forward. Um, towards the front corners of the palate, you do get a little bit. There is a wee touch of dankness to this one. I wouldn't be surprised if there's either a bit of Columbus in this, because it does have a spicy element to it, or it could be a bit of Chinook. Either that or both. 
wouldn't be surprised if, if those two hops have maybe been used in a, in a kind of bittering role in this beer. I think this one, there's something kind of really old school about the hoppy side of this beer. So I, I've got a feeling that this is probably um, Cascade um, in the late edition and then probably um, Chinook and Columbus in the early edition. I think that's probably what's going on with this one. There could maybe be a little touch of Simcoe added to this uh, in, in the later in the boil or something like that. That wouldn't be overly surprising, but yeah, the way that um, everything in this goes together is, is really quite nice. And there's just something remarkably familiar about this beer in, in, uh, to a degree as well. But yeah, um, on the front corners of the palate, you do get a nice little bit of a slightly spicy floral aromatic note. Underneath that, you do get a little touch of a more kind of dank quality. That's what makes me say Chinook. The spiciness makes me say a bit of Columbus. But then round the very front curve of the palate, it's just a little bit lighter and more grassy. Then on that front third of the tongue, that's where you get the nice oily bubble where the kind of juicy, fruity esters push their way out of the beer. So let's look at that fruity side of it now. So yeah, when you take the beer in, you get a little bit of that um, nice... When you take the beer in, you do get a little bit of that nice kind of more... Um, you do get a little touch of an almost kind of plummy juiciness, a bit of a raisiny note to it, but then yeah, and that comes out towards the back of that front part of your palate, you move further forward, you do get a little bit of that lighter, slightly figgy note to it, and then on the front tip of the palate, that's where you get the kind of black currenty, blackberry notes, I feel that, that, that I've described that kind of fruitiness in quite a few beers recently, um, so yeah, it does have the, the kind of typical red fruity profile, if you like, that you'll find in a number of Imperial Stouts and things like that. The Black IPA is essentially a stout malt base with, um, you know, an IPA hop profile, I guess, in some ways. It's, it is, to some degree, it is like that, but just without the kind of creaminess. It's the IPA mouthfeel, um, the IPA hops, and then kind of the more, the, the, the kind of darkening part of the kind of stout, um, the stout malt base or whatever. But um, yeah, this one, as I say, really, really nicely done. I like how everything goes together on this one. On the borderline between the front third of your palate and the mid middle third of your palate, you do have a really roasty, toasty kind of edge to it, this one. And I like that about the beer, actually. Um, yeah, this is a really solid example of the style. The more that you drink of this and the further you go into the aftertaste, I think it gets a little bit more kind of bitter, actually. So I like, I do like how that fits together. In, uh, in this beer. So yeah, this one gets a thumbs up from me. On the hot, on the, the mouthfeel side of things, I would describe this beer as being kind of mid-bodied. The carbonation is quite smooth. Um, nearly dropped that there. The carbonation in this one is really smooth. Um, it does actually feel in some ways it's quite similar in its mouthfeel to the Cartwright that I had and then also to the Hooley pan, these guys they really have a really solid mouthfeel in terms of their, their IPAs. But yeah, the mouthfeel of this one, yeah, quite smooth, mid-bodied. It's actually quite a drinkable black IPA in fairness. It's not this isn't a style that I would ever session. I like having one of these. For me, the black IPA was always a kind of transition beer in a way. It would be if you were going to session, you'd go from like a if you were going on to a stout at the end of the night, you know, this is the sort of thing you would have between a double IPA and uh, yeah, you know, between a double IP and moving on to kind of some sort of stout beer, it's kind of somewhere in the middle of that, quite obviously. But yeah, on the bitterness side of things, I think this one might have, I think this one's got quite a, a good bit of bitterness to it. It must be at least 70, maybe even 80 IBUs out of this, because the black malty side of it gives it a good bit of bitterness. That comes out more towards the back of the palate the further that you go into uh, into the aftertaste. So you really get more and more of that coming out of the... Um, the beer the further you go, you get a nice bit of bitterness from the hops too, so I think probably about 70-ish IBUs, uh, 80, maybe even 80, I think that's a fair estimate for this one. But yeah, the malty side of the beer, it does have a good little bit of a roasty toasty kind of thing coming out of it, you've got a lovely smoothness to it as well, good bit of sweetness, I think this beer does actually get slightly sweeter in the middle of your palate the further you go into the, the aftertaste with it, but um, yeah, the, it's it's got a nice balance there, roasty roasty and slightly sweet in the malt base, good bit of hoppy bitterness as I said and then you've got some really nice kind of juicy fruity qualities to it as well. For me this is just a really really solid um, black IPA and a really nice kind of old school example of the style. I do wish this is a style that we saw a bit more often, I think it's very underrated 
and uh, I think these breweries have done quite a nice job of it, I have to say. So yeah, thumbs up to Hooley Brewery for this one. Really cool to review, to finally get a, a black IPA from these guys, and very nice to be able to review um, Lazy Kitty Brewery uh, on the channel for you as well. It'd be cool to try their Murka at some point as well, because I do wonder, uh, it's probably yeah, a, a sort of exchange of ideas or something like that between the... the um, the, the two breweries for this beer but um, yeah I like how this goes together big thumbs up for me and definitely another very good addition to the Hulia Lab series. I look forward to seeing what these guys are going to do over the next little while. The September release looks as if it's going to be very very interesting but um, yeah let's leave it at that for this one then once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like, subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are from Hayley Bregory as well. Hopefully we can do another beer from Lazy Kitty Brewing at some point. Not sure how likely that is because Frederick did say he was um he wasn't so active in that, but yeah, it would be cool to meet up with him in Kyoto at some point. So we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, thanks again for watching my reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Check out Hayley Bregory, check out um Lazy K Brewing and also Dig the Line if you're watching from Japan and um, yeah it seems that Frederick has a few, uh, he and I have a few friends in common in the Japanese beer scene so it'll be quite interesting to see how that develops but yeah a lovely lovely IPA this one, this one was the Hooli Cat 6.6% uh, from Hooli Brewery and Lazy K Brewing. Thank you again for watching my reviews, check out my social media, check out these breweries and I will catch you guys later. Slanja, Skull, cheers and do give me some other black IPA recommendations in the comment section too. Cheers, Skull.